What is up creator? It is awfully good to see you. I'm going to provide a Google Jamboard tutorial for teachers where we take the power of Jamboard and combine it with OBS so that you can live stream it at your favorite venue. Let's get some. Wow, things are starting to grow quickly here at the channel, and I think one of the main reasons is I love to include you. We want to leverage the power of the community to find more technology so that you can be exposed to all the new cool software and techniques to make your channel grow. So if you have an idea, make sure you put it in comments and let me know, and if it fits the channel, I will give you a shout out and make you a personal tutorial to explain how the software works. Here's an example. We got a post from John Failer. He says, hey Scott, use Google Jamboard in a Chrome tab with lime green background and set your capture area to the board at 16 by 9 and you could produce live overlays that can be moved and scaled off the cuff at OBS Studio. Oh my gosh, this is a wicked great idea and that's what we're going to be talking about right now. Let's get started. Let's get some. Oh, yes. Woo. <laughs> okay, make sure you're logged into your YouTube account and go over to jamboard.google.com. I'll put a link in the description. When you get there, click the orange button in the lower right-hand corner and you are presented with your first blank Jamboard screen. In the upper left-hand corner, click it and type in a name that you want to name this thing. I'll name it Scott's Board. Hit OK. And the first consideration is to change the background color to that chroma key green that everybody likes to work with. So I'll set the background by clicking this tab here and choosing this image icon. And you're presented with this screen. So Jeff Failer said you need to upload a graphic that is 16 by 9, okay? That's absolutely true. One good dimension is the 1080p dimension, which is 1920 by 1080p. I created a graphic myself. And I'm going to drag it over right now. And it automatically uploads. And there you have it. It's got the green screen. Cool. Now the next step is to make sure that it's full screen. And you do that by clicking 100% right here. And now when we bring this into OBS Studio, we can crop out the tops and the sides so that the only thing we see is the green when we decide to designate it as transparent. Now I'm going to show you the flexibility of this software by reviewing the available tools that you can work with. Okay, if you take a look at the pen icon, if you see the little arrow that appears on the right, click that. And it opens up and shows you some sub-choices. Below are your available colors. I want to warn you about using green because it's too close to the chroma key green. And it may not show up when it's designated as transparent. The first icon is your pen. It makes a nice sharp line which would work very well with green transparency the next one is the marker yes the marker and the line is a little bit fatter and is also as equally sharp the next two are problematic the highlighter creates sort of a fat line but as you can see the line is slightly fuzzy and it contains some green in it and it may become transparent so i don't know that i would recommend it and the same goes for the brush it's really transparent, and as you can see, there's just no way that's going to work with green transparency. It will vanish. Now, if you click the eraser icon, you can go in and erase this stuff if you want. But honestly, I think your best bet is just to go up to the clear frame and get rid of everything in one fell swoop. The next one is the selector, and that just allows you to select individual text and or shapes. And I'll just show you that real quick. Here's a sticky note. If you click it, it darkens the entire screen, so it's changing the brightness of the chroma key green which could be a problem in transparency you type your note in here hit save and it adds that note automatically for you but i don't know if it's going to be useful for you because it does change the color of the green so i don't know that you're going to want to use this you can delete it by just clicking the three dots and selecting delete the next one is add an image fairly self-explanatory it's just like we did with green adding the green screen you just drop your image in there and it'll it'll show up and we have a shape drawler now this is this is cool but the problem is it gives you a white inner color and there's no way of actually making that transparent so if you were wanting to use that outer circular line as sort of a highlighter eh, it's probably not going to be your best choice to do it honestly your best bet if you wanted to do something similar to that would be to use the the laser pointer and i like the laser pointer because it goes away on its own see how it animates out so you can highlight something and boom it's gone i think that's pretty cool finally we have the text box tool and all you have to do is click it 
and place your cursor in the green screen and type a note. And once you have it there, you can click the three dots, you can duplicate it, and you have on the right upper right hand corner here, you can tilt it, which is kind of cool, with this handle in the upper left hand corner. And those are your tools. So now what I'd like to do is show you how to bring this in as a source into OBS Studio. This is when it gets fun, here we go. Okay, here we are in OBS, and I want you to understand the concepts of the different types of browser sources that you can use for this and why two of them are not right and why browser source is always the best choice. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna bring in this Jamboard via window capture, okay? Let me show you real quick. So we've got window capture, which is where you designate a window that's being displayed on your PC, right? Display capture basically just shows your screen on your monitor. So that's, we don't want to bother with that. But if we did choose window capture, watch what happens. I can type anything. I'll leave it as window capture or hit okay. And then it asks for the specific window it wants to show. So I'm going to select my Brave browser, which currently is displaying my Jamboard. Watch, see how it brings it in. Okay, I'll hit okay. The size of this window is dependent upon the actual size of the visible screen. So I have two monitors, but I'm going to pretend I have one. So I'm going to want to see the window display on one side of OBS. So I'll make this a little bit smaller, right? And then I'll take my OBS and put it on the other side of the screen. So as you can see, when I shrink the window down on the left, the window capture, it reflects that current size in my viewing area. That's not good. And that's what happens with display capture and window capture. You don't want that. Okay, so the conclusion is browser source is superior because it is an embedded browser inside of OBS, which means that the screen is always full size. Okay, so let's go in and create one now. We'll hit the plus sign under sources. We'll select browser. And I'll just name it browser here for now. Hit okay. And we'll need the URL for the Jamboard. So I just clicked into my Brave browser where I logged in and I highlight the URL, hit control C, go back into OBS and paste the URL into the URL field. And I'm gonna add uh, 1080p dimensions here, which is 1920 pixels wide by 1080 pixels high. Uh, custom CSS, we're not bothering with that. Scroll down, we'll hit shut down source when not visible and refresh browser when it becomes active. I always check those off and I will hit OK. And oh, look at this. Now this is interesting. So even though you're logged in at your Google account in one browser, right, and you copy the URL from that window and you're logged in and you paste it into another browser, Google recognizes that you're using a new browser program and it says, uh-uh, you have to log in again. It's a different browser. And that's just the way Google works. So we have to log in. And in order to do that, I need to right click on the browser source itself and select interact. And it opens up a window and this window allows you to enter text into the browser source itself. Now, <laughs> I think the reason why they do this is because if you were interacting with the window within OBS, it would conflict with other layers. And so it just makes it a lot easier to have it set up this way. And one of the downsides of the browser interaction screen is that you can't paste. You have to manually type the stuff in. So I'm going to have to manually add my username. Okay, hit next. And what does it say? Couldn't sign you in. This browser app may not be secure. Try using a different browser. If you've already using a supported browser, you can refresh it, blah, blah, blah. This is, is a, a problem. problem. It is a countermeasure that's been applied by Google. And guess what? I know the way around this. So here's how you do it. This is cool. There is a block of text that I'm gonna put in the description. I hope that the characters don't give me problems in there, but I'm gonna spell it out for you now. Here's what you need to get into cache so that you can paste it. It is dash dash user dash agent space equal sign quote space super user with a capital S space quote. You got to get this into your computer and get it into cache so that you can paste it. I'm going to copy this and get that out of the way. And now what I want you to do is right click on your OBS icon in your taskbar, right click on OBS Studio 64 bit again, go to properties and add the following to the target that starts the exe file. 
I want you to paste that line of code that I just read off to you at the end of the quote after the EXE, okay? Then I want you to click apply and... Oh, it says something's wrong here. Let's see now, I'm gonna screw this up. I think I need a space right there. Hit apply. Yes, that did work. I'm gonna put this entire target in my description. Sometimes the description will not allow me to add specific characters because they think you're trying to put some kind of funky bad code in there. If that's the case, I will put a link to a text file somewhere, maybe on my Google account, my Google Drive, so that you can have this line of code. It sets you up as a super user when you start up OBS. So I hit OK. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close OBS and restart it. And we're going to start from the top. Here we go. Start it up. Okay. We're back in. It's looking for login just like before. We're going to right click on the browser, select interact again. Now I can enter the information. Uh, let's see. Okay. Enter my username. Okay. Hit next. Password. Okay. Click sign in. And we are in. So basically, oh, we went down a rabbit hole and I explained how to get it to work. We are good to go. Okay, I'm gonna show you now how to resize the Jamboard so that the green screen fits the entire viewable area of your OBS window. And then I'm gonna show you how to apply filters to make the green screen transparent. So let's start by making the, the green screen the full viewable window size of OBS. So click the browser source layer and hold down your Alt key and what we're going to do first is we're going to crop the white sections of the website out of the green screen. So I'm hitting, I'm clicking the handle on the corners while holding the Alt key and making sure that all I see is the chroma key green. Okay, then I'm going to drag it up. I'm going to let go of my Alt key and just resize this thing as best I can without distorting it. So I'm making it a little bit bigger and it looks like there's going to be some part of the screen over the left and right side. We're just going to have to live with that for now based on the viewable port of the green screen, okay? So it looks to be about, mm, I don't know, 20 or 30 pixels on left and right. We'll just have to live with it, but I don't think it's gonna be much of a problem. Now, the next part is to make this green screen transparent. So right click on the source, choose filters, then click on the plus sign under effect filters, select chroma key, hit okay. And boom, it does it right away because the default chroma key color in this filter is green. So we should be fine. I'll hit close and I will add a motion video here just to show you what it looks like. Let me go over into my library and I'll drop in a graphic here. Let's see what looks cool. How about this? This works. All right, there's some swirling blue stuff. I'll put that below. And as you can see, barely it is there let me go into the browser source i'll click it right click and go into interact and i'm going to remove the text here so i'm going to click clear and now i'm going to click the laser pointer and move this window out of the way so you can see what i'm doing and as you can see the the interaction window can be any size but yet what you see is still full screen look at that we are in business let me show you an application let's pretend that i'm explaining how to build a drone and i'll show you what it's like when building a racing drone there are some components that you can easily identify namely the propellers are easy to understand the frame right that's a simple one and the motors down here those are easy to identify but the ones that are a little bit more intense is something called the flight controller which is the brain of the drone the PDP or the power distribution board, which connects the battery to these things called ESEs. These things are like, take the power from the distribution board and take the instructions from the flight controller and intelligently control the motors. These are the components for a racing drone. I have another great video for you. It shows you how to animate text in OBS. Just follow me over here to this link and I will catch you over there. Regardless, I wish you all the success with your channel. Best wishes, stay strong, and I will catch you on the next one. Yes!